Hello Capricorn viewers. Give my camera just a minute to settle. Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna look into the situation. Whatever, you know, whatever the cards want to say. It could be love, could be money, could be psychic, you know, psychic awakening, just whatever wants to come out. We'll see what the story is. As always, if you want a private reading, my email is below in the description box right below this video. My email is dragonenchantress at awol.com. I just give my camera a moment to adjust. Uh, we've got a third party energy here. And the third party isn't always a person. It can be a person, but sometimes it's just like a job or it's a career. It's just some kind of um, outside situation. It could be rumors, could be friends, family. It could be a number of things. We're going to look into it and see what else the cards want to say. True love, potential life partner. So it's like we have a karmic partner here, and then we also have... A um, potential life partner here as well. I feel like, let me see here. We have soulmate, past life connection, soul contract, shyness, fear of rejection. Let me put these up more for you guys. Shyness, fear of rejection. Vulnerability, receptivity. Listening, understanding, new perspective. True love and abundance now flows to you naturally and effortlessly as a result of your open-mindedness, your faith, and your bravery. Domination, control. Hmm. So someone... I feel like this is a third party situation. We have domination, control, isolation, loneliness, emptiness. So it's almost like someone is trying to control this person. They're trying to keep them isolated. They're trying to keep them alone. They're trying to make them feel empty. Someone's trying to block this person from their path. Now, take it as it resonates because, you know what, this could be like a family member or a friend that's jealous of you and that's trying to block you from your path. You know, like there's different, it's all the same energy group, but there's different variations of the story, so keep that in mind. But basically, the energy is that there's someone here that is trying to dominate and control someone and kind of keep them in the dark, kind of keep them alone, keep them empty. This could be someone that's jealous of you. This could be like a friend of me. This could be like a toxic aunt or cousin or mother figure or father figure that wants to, you know, keep keep someone alone here, keep them in the dark, you know, because third party isn't always a romantic partner and it's not always a person either. Sometimes it could just be a third energy, but the basic energy I get here is that someone was vulnerable and naive with the wrong situations. Because there's a third party here that's causing someone a lot of sadness. Now, this could be you. This could be someone in your life that's trying to block you, that you're you're fighting right now. Um, for others, I feel like this could be your person, your true love chose someone else. They chose a karmic, even though you're their potential life partner, you're their true love. But, you know, they chose a karmic and they made that, they made a wrong decision. They were vulnerable with the wrong people, the wrong situations where they were trusting with the wrong people. And now they're they're sad. Now they're hurt. This is a, a past life. Whatever this energy is that's keeping them in the dark, keeping them sad, they're going through, someone, either you or your person, is going through a dark night of the soul. There is a soul contract here that I feel needs to be wrapped up. You know, someone is going through some kind of dark night of the soul. They're learning some really tough karmic lessons during this Mercury retrograde. Um, and maybe just, you know, before it too, just prior to this as well, they, they're just, they've been learning some really hard lessons. This is some really major rough energy. And some of them are really getting in their head. They're really like afraid of rejection. They're really kind of like in this awkward kind of energy right now where they don't know how to communicate with their true love. Like I said, this could be you though. This could be you're going through a dark night of the soul. You're dealing with a jealous person and you're trying to move forward and you are moving forward, but it's just like a little bit of a struggle. But for others, I feel like this is your person, your true love, and someone's trying to block them from coming towards you. 
whoever it is, whether it's on your side or your true love side, someone here does not want you to be happy. Someone here does not want you to have true love. And there's a soul contract here. There's like a, there's like a lesson, like a major karmic lesson here, I feel, about being in your power and being intuitive and trusting yourself. Because I'm getting that whoever this person is, their vulnerability keeps leading them to sadness. Like, whether it's you or your true love, like, someone's vulnerability here keeps putting them in these situations where they get their heart broken. Because someone here is honestly naive and trusting. This is like someone, like, if this is like a third-party situation, it's like this, your person believes rumors about you and it sucks. But it's like they believe... They have toxic, like, frenemies or toxic family or a toxic karmic that don't want to see them happy. They don't want to see them. It's like they're jealous of your person. So they they spread rumors about you or they try to convince them. They try to put them down. They try to dominate and control and isolate them from other people. You know, it's almost like an abusive connection here with on their end, like what, what they're dealing with, with, with whoever these people are that are jealous of them. And, you know, their lesson is to, to stop being so naive, to stop being so impressionable, and to, to stop being vulnerable with the wrong people. It's like they're repeating this cycle where they keep trusting the wrong people. They keep thinking that angels are demons and demons are angels. It's like they don't trust their spirit guides, but they trust these toxic frenemies they have. It's such a weird energy. It's like they're... Like some of them, some of them think that their spirit guides are demons. Like some of them don't trust their own spirit guides. They don't trust their own intuition. They have like a third eye block because of some traumatic things that they've seen. And I just feel like they keep being vulnerable. It's almost like that, like a situation where it's like they know that they're being used or that they're taken, being taken for granted. They know that there's toxic people around them, but they trust anyway. It's almost like it's almost like self sabotage. It's like someone that like. Like, everyone warns them that, you know, their friend, their best friend or something like that is toxic, is, you know, an abuser, and they, they don't listen to all these people that are trying to protect them, but they'll trust the best friend, they'll trust the tro toxic best friend over everybody else, and then they get their, the, their selves heartbroken, you know? And then the right people, like the decent people, they don't trust the decent people. They don't resonate with the good people. They don't believe in the good people. They just, this is somebody, whether this is you or this is your person, this is someone who self-sabotages. This is someone who's too naive, too trusting. And it's self-sabotage because they do trust the wrong people. They will listen to the toxic mother or father or aunt or cousin or best friend that wants to see them fail, that wants to you know, put them in the dark, that wants to isolate them, that wants to dominate and control and brainwash and gaslight them. They'll listen to that person, but they won't listen to the people that are trying to help them. They won't listen to the people that are, that are, you know, actually do have their best interest at heart. And I guess that's part of being gaslit, you know, but, um, and then, yeah, the people that they should trust, the people that actually do want to see them do well, they don't trust those people. They don't, you know what I mean? Like, they don't resonate. This is almost someone that had, like, an abusive childhood. So they don't resonate with people that treat them well. They don't resonate with people that want the best for them. They don't resonate with people that have their best interests at heart. It's almost, it's really sad, but it's almost like being used and being manipulated and, you know, the gossip and the drama. Even though they don't like it, it feels like home. It feels natural. It feels like a normal part of life to them. They like that it's predictable and controllable. They like that, you know what I mean? It's like it, they just understand that energy. They, they resonate with that energy even though they don't like it, you know? It's like all they've known. But, um, but yeah, someone is going through a dark night of the soul. And like I said, this could be you. This could be your person that's going through this energy we just talked about. But whoever it is, it's... Um, you're going through some tough, you have some tough soul contracts and you have some patterns that are repeating where it's like you're in this, someone's in this cycle where they keep being vulnerable and they keep trusting the wrong people. And some of them did, did, uh, trust a karmic over you. Some of them, like for those of you in like a third party situation, like the karmic lied about you or something and they trusted the karmic over you in the past. Or they have like this toxic friend or aunt or cousin or, or mother, father, family, whatever this toxic person in their life that's jealous and doesn't want to see them do well. And they, they go to them for advice and they, you know, like they, they just, they know intuitively something feels off, like their body feels off. 
around this person. The energy feels dark. The energy feels off. But it's familiar. It's comfortable. It's, it's what they're used to. It's If they've had an abusive childhood, then it's, it's familiar energy to them. So they keep repeating those patterns. Because someone here might have believed rumors about you, honestly. Someone might have went to someone for advice and they got bad advice. Like they went to like a family member or a friend or someone about you and got some really bad advice. Like they, because this person doesn't want them to be happy. Like you guys might have been dating and they might have like this, this toxic family member that just feels jealous. Like they don't want to, or toxic best friend or whatever that like doesn't like that their friend gets more, maybe that maybe their friend is more attractive than them or something like that there's just like some kind of jealousy here i get like major jealous energy and maybe they like they went to them to talk about you and like maybe they were like hoping they'd be happy for them but instead this person told them like oh i bet she's just using you for money or i bet he's just using you for sex or i bet like like, so, like, like you're acting different. I don't like it. Like something like they got in their head is kind of what I feel just for some of you, not for all of you, but for some of you, I feel like this person really got in your person's head. Like they really, um, they gave them really bad advice and your person was stupid and naive, honestly. And they trusted that advice because even though their intuition was yelling at them not to listen to the advice, they, they just went with it. They're like, okay. Like, you're right. This probably is too good to be true. You're right. I, cause they, they, this person noticed that your person was happier lately. Like this, this third party, it's like, they noticed that, that your person was, has been happier. They have like that little pep in their step, you know, like their, their energy is lighter. They're more confident. They're, they're, they're having more fun. And this, this jealous person is like, who the hell does he or she think they are? Like, you're going to have true love, but I haven't found my true love yet. Or I've been married for 10 years and my husband left, you know, my husband left me last year. And, you know, you think that, that you're going to find true love? Like, I don't think so. Like, you know, someone, whether it's you or someone else, for a few of you, someone went and got bad advice from someone. And they were naive and they thought that they just kind of assumed that they had their best interest in heart. But really, they were just trying to stop this, this true love, this couple from being together. You know, it's just jealousy here. So someone gave someone really bad advice. Someone, someone told someone to like, to let you go. Or someone told you to let your person go or something. This could be like your own best friend maybe told you to let someone that you've been talking to go. Like they might have said like, oh, I get like really, I get like fuckboy vibes from him. Or like, I feel off about him. And like, they're really just jealous because, you know, you showed them a picture and they're like, damn, he's hot. Or why can't I get a guy like that? Or why can't I get a girl like that, you know? And and you just took their advice. You're like, okay, I'm going to trust their intuition. But it's like they, they were just trying to, they just did not want it. Someone just did not want to see someone else happy. Someone did not want to see someone with their with their true love because they don't have their true love. This is probably someone, this, this person that caused this drama might be single or they're in a very unhappy relationship where they feel alone. Because I'm getting whoever, whoever started these rumors or whoever you know, try to mislead someone away from their true love. I'm getting that that person is very lonely. So they're either actually alone, like don't have very many friends, don't have a relationship, or they're like in a relationship, but they're like really unhappy and like their person doesn't appreciate them. Like they don't feel, this person doesn't feel beautiful or they don't feel handsome. They don't feel attracted. So they want to drag everyone else down to their level. And I feel like whoever this is, like, as an empath, whether it's you or your person, someone keeps getting looped into this cycle where it's, like, instead of realizing what a toxic little leech this person is, someone keeps feeling bad for them. Someone's, like, oh, like, they've been, someone's, like, well, someone's, like, watching this and being, like, oh, like, they feel alone, like, they've been through all that, oh, I hope, I hope my relationship isn't making them upset. It's, like, are you serious? Like, no, cut this person out. If this is you, cut this person out. Like, you know who this is. Or this is your person that needs to cut this person out. But it's like they keep feeling sorry for this person. And it's like, why do you, why would you feel sorry for someone that, like, wants to drag you down with them? You know what I mean? It's like that, that energy of, like, the girl who goes to a bar and, like, hates on all the other women there for no damn reason. They just hate on the women just because they're dressed cute and they... They have a different body type than what she has or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of catty energy where it's like just hating on other people, just hating 
you know, seeing a happy couple walking down the street and thinking, oh, like, like glaring at them, like, oh, how dare they have that? Why don't I have that? You know, and like, I'll never understand that because you can be lonely as all hell and still not want to take away someone else's blessing. You know what I mean? Like, it's normal to, to see someone on the street, like, like a happy couple and think like, like, I hope I have that too someday. But like, why would you want to take that away from them? What do you get from taking that away from that couple? Nothing. And this person's just bitter. They're just jealous. They're just lonely. So they want it. They're just miserable. And they want to drag everyone else down to their level. This could be like a mother or um, for just, it's just like, this is a specific message for one or two people. But I'm getting someone that's like really, really, really overweight. Like really, and I'm not, I'm not body shaming, but I'm just getting the visual. I'm just telling you the visual I see. I see someone that's like overweight, like in a wheelchair. And that's just for one or two specific people here in this group. That's not for everybody. But I'm getting like a mother or like, a, like an older woman that's like in like a wheelchair and she's just miserable. And like you or your person feel bad for her. You know, whoever this is for, it's like someone feels bad for her. Like this woman's just miserable. And she keeps like guilt tripping you into feeling bad for her. Like she keeps. And when I say, when I say big, I mean big, I mean big, big. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not body shaming. I'm just getting the, I'm just telling you the visual. Cause sometimes I get visual descriptions when I channel. And again, that's just for one or two people. But I get like that in that energy and it's just really upsetting because I just feel like this empath, whether this is you or your person, it's like you keep someone keeps feeling bad for this person. Someone keeps feeling like, well, they don't have anybody else like they've they've been through this and they've been through that. And that's why they're like this. And it's like, no, a lot of people have been through that exact same thing. A lot of people have been through the same traumas, the same heartbreaks, and they still did not become that that bitter, hateful person. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people are going through the same thing and they, there's two types of people. There's people who want other people to suffer the way that they suffered. And there's people that don't want anybody to ever have to suffer the way that they suffered. You know what I mean? So it don't, don't convince yourself like that, that, that's, you know, that, that what they've been through made them that way. Because you know what I mean? Like that, that shows their character, that shows their soul that they, they went down that path and they, just want to drag you down and want to drag other people down out of jealousy. You know what I mean? Because, like, even if your life sucks, you can still want the best for other people. You know what I mean? Like, you really can. You can still choose to be a good person. Um, and it's really sad because whoever this person is, like, they really feel bad for this person. They really trust them. There's someone that they go to for advice. Some of them, this could be, like, um like a mother or something that's like on, I'm getting like hospice for some, but I'm getting like also, um, like a, um, like they have like a caretaker or something, or like your person is their caretaker or you're their care or you're, if it's your story that it's like, you're like, you're this person's caretaker or like you, you do a lot for them. Like you grocery shop for them or your person, if this is your person's story, then it's like your person grocery shops for them or just takes care of them. So that's part of their motive and not letting them find true love is that they don't, they don't want to be abandoned. They don't want to lose that. They don't want to lose their, their meal ticket. They don't want to lose the, you know, the grocery store runs and the, the weekly visits and the chats and all that. They want to just be bitter and, and make sure that you can't ever leave them. They want to control you or they want to control your person. And someone here needs to nip this in the bed and realize how toxic this is. Somebody, either you or your person are an empath. And you're letting your, someone's letting their empathy get the best of them. You need to control your empathy or you're going to live your life being a slave to others. You're going to live your life being in these situations where you're being drained by these psychic vampires that just want to drag you down and want to isolate you and keep you in the dark and dominate you and control you. You know, it's going to continue if you allow it to continue. It really is. It's going to continue if you allow it to. Or like I said, this could be what your person's dealing with right now. But whatever the situation is, it's like someone needs to stand up here. They need, it's like, it's almost like that energy where it's like, God, how do I, I'm, I'm like, what am, what am I channeling here? I'm trying to think of this energy. I'm sorry. Sometimes when I channel, I have to like, I have to, you know, think for a second what I'm, what I'm picking up here. It's just a snake. It's just, it's someone... 
It's someone who like knows what they're doing. Like they pretend to be stupid. They pretend to be helpless. They pretend to be the victim. But like other people know how toxic this person are person is. But like this person like plays on this person's empathy. Like, oh, like I have an emergency. I need you. Please come over. Like, no, I haven't talked to anybody in a week. Like guilt tripping too. Like, I have no one here. Like, don't you care about your dear poor old mother? Come over here. Like. Like that, like, like that kind of energy, like they're just putting so much pressure on you or so much, so much pressure on your person. But whoever this is, this has to be wrapped up or you're going to, if you, if this, if this empath continues this cycle, they're going to spend their life just giving and giving and giving all of themselves to psychic vampires. And they're going to end up being like the psychic vampires in 10 years, five years. They're going to be bitter. They're going to be drained. They're going to be exhausted. They're going to be like the people that they've been trying to save. This is someone who has like a hero complex that wants to save everybody that feels like they just have like, like 10 of wands energy, like the weight of the world on their shoulders. This person needs to realize that they're not, they don't need to be a hero. They don't need to take care of everybody. You know, whoever this is, someone needs to stand up to that toxic mother figure and say, and set boundaries or, or you know, friend or family, whoever this is, someone needs to, and like I said, it could be like a best friend. It could be like a best friend that's just jealous, does not want to see you do better than him or better than her. And someone needs to stand up and be like, you know what? Like, you cannot come over unannounced. I'm busy. Sorry. You know, um, I cannot come bring you groceries today. I did that last week. You can, you can call someone else to do it this time. You can call uh, you know, postmates to do it this time. I cannot do it every week. And I've told you that already. You're not going to guilt trip me. I, I let you know what's going on already. I let you know that I'm busy working this week. So you need to chill. Someone needs to set boundaries and they need to not let this, this person guilt trip them. Cause I just get like a, like an empathy, like a, like, oh, but they're all alone and they're all, you know, this and that. And it's like, don't you get that this person is like trying to control you and trying to isolate you and trying to keep you from true happiness? Why would you feel bad for someone that's trying to do you like that? That's someone that's trying to hurt you like that. Someone that's someone that you trusted that's giving you bad advice to keep you from having what they don't have. Some of them are disabled. That's what I'm getting. Like some like some of them, it's like there's like a disabled person. So they know that they're not going to, they know they can't really go out and meet people. So they don't want you to go out and meet people either. They want to, or they don't want your person to go out and meet people. They just want to, this could be like a, like a mother figure where it's like your person is like, like a mama's boy or something, but it's it's almost like the like the water boy. You know what I mean? I haven't seen that movie in years, so I don't know why that came. I don't know why that reference came to mind because I have I don't actually remember that movie very well. But um, it's like that energy where they're just like they're just like codependent on their son or their daughter or their best friend. Someone's really codependent and like jealous like they don't want to see you happy they don't want to see you do well they they want you to just be a slave to them their whole life they want to be able to drain you this is a psychic vampire this is like a succubus soul possibly too that's draining your energy or draining your person's energy some of you need to protect your person some of you need to to spiritually psychically go into the into astral into the astral and protect your person some of them actually, some of you, like your person actually has like a toxic fr friend, family member, whoever, that's literally feeding on their energy, like, like a leech, like a psychic vampire feeding on their energy source. So they don't even have the energy or confidence or strength to come forward to you. Some of you actually need to do uncrossing spells and protection spells and truth revealing spells on your person to help them get through this energy. But this needs to be nipped in the bud, whatever the situation is. Because like I said, otherwise this person is going to keep going through these cycles where they're vulnerable with, with psychic vampires, with abusers, physical abusers, mental, abuser, uh, mental abusers, gaslighters, people that just want to use them, that want to hurt them. And they're going to be sad. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep being sad. And then eventually they're going to get past the sadness and they're going to open their heart up again to the wrong person and the wrong people again. They're going to get heartbroken again. They're going to go back into this phase of, you know, everyone... Everyone's toxic. Everyone wants to hurt me. Like, why do I keep getting used? Well, it's like you keep getting used and hurt because you keep going for this type of person. You keep you keep letting your empathy get the best of you. You keep not setting boundaries. You keep putting yourself in these situations and letting these people drain you and drain you and drain you and feeling sorry for them, even though you know how toxic they are and how much they're using you. You know, someone needs to be stronger. Honestly, someone needs to cut this out. Otherwise, your life is going to be this, this endless cycle, vulnerability, sadness, vulnerability, sadness, 
you know, opening up to everybody, trusting, you know, you like, you, you know, your heart explosion, just like a heart opening, which is like, oh, like, I believe in love again, like, oh, I met this new person, like, I'm going to give this a chance, and then they turn out to be the same as everybody else, and you go back to the cycle of, of being heartbroken, and then you go for the same type of person, same type of people in different bodies, same person, but in different bodies, you got to, you got to end these cycles finally, you got to, you got to cut these people out, you got to start new cycles, you have to set stronger boundaries. You have to stop letting your empathy get the best of you or your person does. If this is your person, I want to say your person needs witchcraft. Honestly, if you do witchcraft, I, I'm, I, I can't, I don't know. If you do witchcraft, honestly, your person needs witchcraft. Look at the candles. Look at the candles. Your person needs candle magic. Your person needs witchcraft. Your person needs uncrossing. They need protection because this is a psychic vampire that they're dealing with. And this person's too empathetic and too gentle and too naive to be able to protect themselves. They don't know how to protect themselves. They're almost like a like childlike in their innocence. So if this is your person, they honestly kind of need you to protect them. They need, you know, uncrossing, protection work, um, truth revealing spells. Um, spells to help them be more confident, more assertive. Like they need some support. They need some major support. Um... Be careful during Mercury Retrograde because spell work is tricky during Mercury Retrograde. So if you don't feel right about it, then wait till after the Retrograde. But um, but yeah, someone wants to come towards you and this karmic person is trying to stop them. And for some, it's like a third person it is a romantic third party. This could be like a romantic connection where it's like the person, like an ex-wife or ex-husband that's like, oh, I'm going to be alone without you. Like, you know, like stay for the kids. Like the kids need you. Don't Don't date anybody else. How could you? Just like... I see like that like gif of like the woman falling down the stairs. Have you guys seen that gif on Facebook where she's like, I think it's like a meme too, where she's like dressed like Marilyn Monroe. She has like the, the fancy, the long fur coat on like the, the, um, like the, like the seductress and she like falls down the stairs and does the dramatic, dramatic sweep across the stairs. Like she fainted, you know, it's like that kind of energy where it's like. Like, she pretends to faint. Like, it's like, I get like, the, that's kind of the energy I was talking about before, where it's like someone, like, pretends to faint, and they pretend to have a health issue, or pretend to have this or that going on. And then, like, everyone knows they're faking it, except for your this naive person, honestly. I hate to say it like that, but... But you, you... Okay, so either you're being blocked from your true love, and you could be... It could also be that your true love is out there. So you could be in a situation where you're like caretaking for someone who's draining the shit out of you and you are in this karmic pattern and you need to end this so that you can go out and find your true love. Like your true love and abundance and happiness and a new life is waiting for you. So put yourself first for a change. Um, for others, this is your person and you know, they need to, this cycle needs to end because this is a, this is the thing that's blocking you from being with your true love. Whether it's on their end or your end, whoever this person is, whatever this energy is, this is this is the block that's that's keeping you from true love. You know, it's like someone has like a new perspective coming in, but like whenever this new perspective, whenever this person like, you know, grows the pair, male or female, male or female, whenever this person like steps up and tries to change things. And comes into this new perspective and starts thinking, you know what, I do need to move out of my house. I do need to change my life. I do need to let this person go. Or I do need to set boundaries with this person. This person pulls them right back with guilt trips. Dominates them. Makes them feel isolated, alone, and empty. Makes them feel trapped in the cycle. And you you or your person, either you need to get out of the cycle. And you need to be, you know, you need to be more assertive. You need to be more honest. You need to do what's best for yourself. And you need to not give into the guilt trips, no matter how much it hurts in the moment. It might be the, the hardest thing you have to do in your life, but you need to do it. Otherwise, this is going to be your life. You know what I mean? Like, if you're taking care of a toxic mother figure, for example, that's just draining you, or like, are you going to do that forever? Are you going to, do you want to be 10 years, do you want to, you want to be 10 years down the road and like, all your friends have met their true love, but you haven't because you never get to go out and do anything fun. Do you want that to be you? You know what I mean? Like, no. And this isn't, this isn't for somebody that's like taking care of like a sweet old lady. This is not that energy. This is somebody that's taking care of like a succubus, like a toxic psychic vampire that's jealous and bitter and hates everybody. This is like a top, this is like someone taking care of like a toxic person. 
This is not like, this isn't you taking care of your sweet old grandma that bakes you cookies. No, this is not that energy. This is, this is someone taking care of like a straight leech, like someone that will guilt trip you, someone that will gaslight you and you know it, you know, intuitively it feels off. Like, you know, like you, you, you brush, someone brushes their own feelings aside because they feel so bad for this person and you need to be smarter. Yeah, for some, this is someone in a wheelchair, like I was saying. Um, if this is your specific story, too, and you want me to go more in-depth, just send me an email. The video might cut out, so if it does, please check back on my page for um, for part two. Because uh, my camera phone keeps doing that. But I'm going to wrap it up. But but yeah, like, someone needs to cut this cycle out. And like I said, if this is your person, if this is your person, your person is, like, baby. Your person is baby. Like, your person, it's, it's like, they're sweet, they're gentle, but they have no backbone, so they honestly need your support and they need your help. And I know that's, I know that's stressful, but like they need, even just like as a friend, even, you know what I mean? Because it's, someone needs help here. Someone needs to get out of this energy. And they've tried before. Either you or someone has tried to get past this toxic person that gives them bad advice and keeps them down and tries to separate them from finding their true love or being with their true love. But in the past, it's like, yeah, someone's tried to get out of this energy. Someone's tried to have this new perspective, a new life, moving out of a toxic living situation. This person's come along with the guilt trips and dominated them and, you know, in power struggle here, you know. And this person, whoever this is, you or your person, they feel so isolated and alone and hopeless. They don't know what to do because they feel like they can't escape this, this karmic person, whoever this is. You know, they feel like they just, they're sad. They're unhappy. They get guilt tripped. You know what I mean? This is someone that like locks themselves in their room. It's someone that's like all, it's like all work, no play. It's like. Hidden truth. Yeah. You see this energy? It's like. The person takes the mask off and they're like, you know what? I want to be loyal to myself. I want to be stable. I want to go to my true love. And this person's like, nope. No, you don't. See her? You see her little spurk? She's like, hidden motives, red flags. Ooh. As I said, if this is your reading too, you can send me an email, but I want to wrap it up just before my phone cuts out. Yeah, someone's going to end this pattern though, but they need your help. They need your help ending it. If this is your person, they actually really do need help ending it because they're in this codependent devil energy where they keep being manipulated. They keep being guilt tripped. The guilt is the biggest obstacle because your person is so empathetic. They really need to learn to have a, a backbone. This person, this psychic vampire is toxic. They're going to come at you. They're going to come at you and try to make your person hesitate and try to make them doubt their words. But I think ultimately your person's going to choose you. But like I said, I think that I think that you, submissive reconciliation, I think you're going to win this. I feel like you have to be the more dominant one almost. <laughs> like if you have to be the dominant one here and you're going to win this, you're going to have reconciliation. You're going to have the passion and romance you're seeking. It's like, it's the water boy energy. Like I haven't seen that in so long, but like you remember how like, Vicky was like the bad girl or whatever like she dressed she's like the goth girl she dressed a certain way and like you know he was all over her he was like Adam Sandler was like super sweet but he had like no backbone like his mom controlled him he was like he was still living at home with mom you know and like his mom controlled him and like but I think at the end he chooses her he eventually does choose her I'm pretty sure I haven't seen that in so long but it just reminds me of that energy where it's like they're gonna choose you, but like they need some help. They need a they need a big push. They need a push, and that might be through witchcraft, honestly. For those of you that practice, you know, for those of you that practice, you know, do what feels right. But for those of you that practice, and like I said, be careful during retrograde because that's not a great time to do witchcraft unless you really know what you're doing. But um some of them need, you know, they need protection, they need uncrossing, they need soul retrieval they need they need strength and power they really do they need like almost like dragon spirit energy here yeah because some of them want to come home to you they want to come home they want to get their finances in order some of them feel like their finances are not in order so they're embarrassed um but they feel yeah they feel trapped chaser chasey 
Yeah, it's like still a struggle. Ugh. It's still a struggle. I feel like the divine is going to intervene at some point because they're sick of this karmic person trying to keep your person away from you. It's like it's like a mother that like never let go. It's like a mother or a best friend that just ugh. It's just icky energy. Yeah, I think someone is eventually going to apologize for being such a baby and being so stagnant. You know what I mean? Like the divine is going to kind of change things here, but they're going through a dark night of the soul. So it's a process, but, um, you know, keep up with my reading, subscribe, and we'll see where this energy takes us in a couple of weeks. Hopefully things will shift. Um, but I feel like they're learning like a major karmic lesson, but they need to get out of that karmic cycle because they keep repeating that, that cycle of, you know, trusting the wrong people and not trusting the right people. So hopefully they get out of that energy soon. Um, you know, we'll see where it takes us. Like I said, some of you need to, to do some of you need to step in telepathically astrally some of you need to take that sort of truth and step in there and fight for your person because they don't know how to fight for themselves i don't know how else to say it but they don't have a backbone honestly um so if you love them some of you have to kind of they need to learn to be strong they don't know how to be strong but maybe maybe like maybe they've been abused and in this situation so long that they've lost their strength so they need that strength to come back to them they need their power to come back to them soul retrieval would be great for them too or soul retrieval would be good for you if this is your story but um but yeah like i said if you want a private reading just email me my email is in the description box below my email is dragonenchantress at awol.com i thank you guys for watching uh please donate if you can and please subscribe please share please like thank you guys